another video. Today we're going to be solving a tricky question on number density. This is a question from OCR from 2014 and involves thinking about the definition of number density and then applying it to find the drift velocity. The best way to start this video would actually be to pause it so that you guys have the chance to attempt this question. So now please pause this video and solve the question. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution. So the smallest conductor with a computer processing chip can be represented as a rectangular block. So we're assuming that this is just a rectangular block that is one atom high, that's pretty small, four atoms wide and 20 atoms long. What such block is shown in the figure below? The block is made from phosphorus atoms with a diameter of 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 10. Okay, well, if you were to zoom in, each of those blocks is going to have a tiny diameter, which is going to be 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 10. Now what you can actually do is represent this whole length you know from here to there as essentially the addition of these diameters. Because we know that this is 20 atoms long the length all across this side will actually be 20 times d. So length is equal to 20d and by the same logic our width is going to be 4 because it's 4 atoms wide. By the way, you don't need to count them individually, it says it uh, over here in the question. So 4 atoms wide, so this side here will be equal to 4d. Now the height itself will be equal to just 1 of the diameter we can write this as 1d. Okay, so the next part of the question would be to show that the number density of free electrons within the block is about 2 times 10 to the power of 28. Okay, well, the number density is equal to the number of charge carriers divided by the volume. Now, the number of charge carriers is going to be 20 times 4, because this is 20 by 4, so that's essentially 80. So, let me just write 20 times 4, just to make sure that you guys know where this comes from. Now, the volume, I should just write this over here on the side, the volume will just simply be the multiplication of the three dimensions. I'm sure, I'll just write this over here on the side. So the volume V is going to be equal to the height times the width times the length. Now the height is just equal to that the diameter, so that's D multiplied by the width, which is 4D, multiplied by the length, which is 20d. So this means that overall the volume is going to equal 4 times 20 um, which is 80d cubed. And this is our volume which we can just plug in here so it's going to be 80d cubed. So 20 times 4 is 80 of course so it's going to be 80 over 80 d cubed, the 80s are going to cancel out and what we're left with is 1 over d cubed. But hang on a minute, we're given the diameter. We know that d is 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 10, so this is equal to 1 over 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 10 cubed. And if we put this into a calculator, we're going to get about 1.8 times 10 to the power of 28, uh, which is very close to the value that we've been asked to get, which is 2 times 10 to the power of 28. Okay guys, so now that we have our number density, let's actually calculate the current between P and Q when we're given the mean drift velocity uh, to be about 1.9 times 10 to the power of minus 5. Okay, so let's see whether we can fit both of these 
questions on there. Okay, well, let's start off by writing our equation. So we know that I is equal to NAE times V. Now, in this case, we know what the drift velocity is. We've already calculated it. As an exam tip, even if um, for some reason you cannot quite figure out part two, if it's a show question, you could directly use this value into part three. Okay, so I will be equal to n, the number density, which is about 2 times uh, 10 to the power of 28. Just to avoid any rounding errors, so I'm probably going to use my more accurate value, which is 1.8 times 10 to the power of 28. I'm going to multiply by our area. Now, what will the area be? This is actually kind of tricky. If we think about the way this is conducting, imagine this is a computer chip and imagine that the current is going along here. Then the area, the cross-sectional area, will actually be this rectangle in which the height is equal to the diameter and the length is equal to four times the diameter because there are four atoms so overall the uh, the total length of this rectangle is 4d so this means that our area a will be equal to d multiplied by 4d which is equal to 4d squared where d is equal to 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 10 Okay, well, let's plug in all the values. So we know that n, the number density, is about 1.8 times 10 to the power of 28. We know that our area is 4d squared, so it's going to be 4 times 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 10. That's our diameter, so we need to square it. And we also need to multiply by E and V. Remember, E is the electron charge, so it's 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 times our mean drift velocity, which is 1.9 times 10 to the power of minus 5. Let's plug this into a calculator now. And if we do so, we're going to get quite a tiny current, so that's about 3.16 times 10 to the power of minus 14. Uh, let's leave that as 3.2 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 14 amps. Okay, folks, so this was quite a tricky little question on number density and drift velocity. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.